Can you imagine a life without blood banks, traffic lights, security systems, cloth dryers, and automatic elevator doors? These remarkable creations, and a lot more, wouldn't exist today if it weren't for the brilliant minds of black people. Black inventors and scientists have long created pioneering works, but because they lived in a highly segregated nation and were victims of racism, their work rarely got them the compensation and recognition it deserved. Their inventions were often whitewashed. For this Black History Month special, we are going to take a look at a hundred things that were invented by black people, the kind of inventions that we should have learned in school. One such invention was blood banks. Charles R. Drew was an African-American scientist and surgeon born in Washington, D.C. He was also a pioneer in the field of blood storage and blood transfusion. Because he lived in a period of intense racial discrimination, he actively opposed the segregation of blood donors. He advocated for fair treatment of black doctors and was recognized as the father of the blood bank. He discovered and developed countless blood banking techniques. He was one of the pioneers that discovered that basically you can remove the plasma, liquid portion of blood, and actually lyophilize, freeze-dry plasma and store those proteins for prolonged periods of time. And really it was breakthrough technology in terms of being able to provide some kind of a transfusion support with protein during war efforts. His impact can still be felt today, with approximately 20% of donated red blood cells being used to treat patients with blood cancer. Another invention is the traffic lights. When automobiles first hit the market, navigating the streets in America became a chaotic nightmare. Horses, pedestrians, bicycles, and streetcars all tried to compete with motor vehicles for the right to take the streets. The first traffic lights that were used in the US appeared in the 1910s. They were mounted on intersections and only had two lights, red and green. But drivers didn't have enough time to react and this caused a lot of traffic accidents. Garrett Morgan was the son of an enslaved parent from Ohio. Even though he only finished elementary school, he came up with a remarkable solution that would completely revamp the way people use traffic lights. It was a madhouse out there. Drivers jockeying for a position, changing lanes or turning without even glancing to see if somebody else was barreling through the intersection. Enter Clevelander Garrett Morgan, credited with inventing this first-of-a-kind traffic light. Before the light went up near East 105th and Euclid Avenue, a light bulb went off in Garrett Morgan's... In 1923, Morgan patented the first three-way traffic signal, the traffic light we use today. Morgan introduced the yellow light to help inform drivers of when they had to prepare for traffic to stop. His invention helped transform modern America and create a safer space for both drivers and pedestrians. But when it came to safety, nothing could outmatch the home security system. Marie Van Britten Brown. Today, over 24 million households have home security cameras. But did you know the first one was created by a nurse from Queens? Explore the untold story of Marie Van Britten Brown. A black woman born in Jamaica, Queens, New York, invented the very first home security system with her husband. She received a patent for it in 1969. Her concept was very different from the one we use today. It was more complex and very expensive to make. As a result, it wasn't manufactured on a large scale. However, it provided the necessary guidelines to create modern CCTV security systems. The next invention on this list is the cloth dryer. George T. Sampson was a black man who invented the early version of the automatic clothes dryer back in 1892. This device came with a frame that would allow the user to suspend garments above a stove so that they could dry faster. Before Samson's innovation, clothes dryers in England and France took the form of ventilators. They were basically barrels with holes. Samson's invention also functioned as a ventilator, but eliminated the necessity for an open flame. It was a lot more practical and efficient. Another interesting invention was the automatic elevator doors. In the mid-1800s, people didn't like to ride elevators because they were unsafe. At first, they were an industrial invention. They were used for moving factory goods. With the invention of the safety brake and other safety precautions, elevators became more personal and safer to use. Passengers communicated directly with an elevator operator who guided the traffic. This person opened and closed doors, told the people where to stand, and so on. It just seemed unbelievably fantastic. Tourists to America in the 1850s and 60s went out of their minds when they encountered an elevator. There's a story of the Duke of Devonshire who went to New York and he tried an elevator and then he wrote home to his family to say, I just rode on a vertical railroad. 
but some buildings didn't have an operator and there were many people who accidentally fell to their deaths because they had to manually operate the doors. Alexander Miles decided to improve the elevator experience even further. This black inventor came up with doors that would automatically open and close. He introduced a series of rollers and levers that would automate the entire process. Another invention that became widely available was the folding cabinet bed. In 1885, Sarah Good made history as the first black woman to obtain a US patent. After moving to Chicago, she opened up a furniture shop. It was in this store that she invented a groundbreaking idea, the folding cabinet bed. Since most people lived in smaller homes, they didn't have enough space to fit their furniture. So, she came up with a concept that would accommodate small spaces and still be useful for daily use. Another invention is the gas mask. Garrett Morgan, the same man who invented the three light traffic lights, came up with another idea that solved a serious problem that plagued scientists for years, smoke inhalation. But this invention was born out of a tragedy. On March 25, 1911, there was a fire at the Triangle Shirt Waist Company in New York. The Triangle Factory fire was devastating around the country because it highlighted the need for reform uh, in safety practices. 146 workers died, most of them from carbon monoxide poisoning. Morgan, who used to work in the garment sector, wanted to create a portable product that helped reduce the risk of inhaling smoke. Morgan's inventor brain began to think. He imagined a situation where firefighters could enter a raging blaze, wearing a breathing device that gave them time to rescue victims. He invented the very first safety hood and smoke protector. Next on our list is the improved ironing board. The Chinese started ironing clothes 2,000 years ago. The original iron was made of copper, stone, and iron pieces, baked on fire, and then applied to fabrics. But people needed more practical and improved versions. They wanted a durable and light ironing board that could be used for ironing custom-fitted dresses made with tiny waistlines and corsets. Every woman in the 19th century had trouble ironing these garments. They were tight at the wrists and puffy on the shoulders. Sarah Boone was a black woman who received a patent in 1892 for creating an ironing board that could handle these challenges. Another invention is the refrigerated trucks. Before there was refrigerated transport, people used snow and blocks of ice to keep their products cool. In the 1800s, ice harvesting was a common practice. Ice blocks and salt were used for food storage, preservation, and food transportation, but it wasn't a reliable or safe option for long distance travel. Frederick Jones revolutionized the industry. He invented the very first system for mobile refrigeration. Jones and Joseph Numero, a local merchant, founded Thermo King Corporation. When his boss asked him to figure out a way to keep food from spoiling during overland transportation, Fred Jones went to work. What he came up with was the world's first system for refrigerated transportation. It's time for us to unlearn all the BS they taught us and learn who we truly are. That's exactly why we made our new Hidden History Workbook. It's a free workbook designed for those that want to wake up and go deeper than the whitewashed version of our history. This will only be available for a limited time. Click the link in our description to grab yours now for free. A company that produced mobile refrigeration devices, it soon became an international corporation. Jones was the first black person in America to receive the National Medal of Technology. Next is the tissue holder. Toilet paper was often stored on hooks or shelves and could easily get wet or dirty. Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner was a black woman who wanted to make convenient inventions that would help with everyday life. She invented the toilet paper holder, a device that could securely hold the roll in place and prevent the tissues from becoming contaminated. But Mary came up with other inventions like the sanitary belt. The company that wanted to buy the belt rejected the invention the second they learned that a black woman made it. Although she invented the belt in the 1920s, she couldn't get a patent until 30 years later. Back then, women could use tampons but these products were deemed indecent, so women used rags and cloth instead. The sanitary belt gave women their freedom back up until the 1970s when maxi pads were invented. Another one of her inventions was the backwasher. It was a product you could mount on a bathtub wall or a shower and use it to wash your back clean. She received a patent for it in 1987. The backwasher Mary invented could be used for both cleansing and massaging the back. Before the backwasher, people used sponges and small pieces of fabric to scrub their bodies. Brushes with long handles were a popular choice for removing dead skin cells on the back, but it took time and effort to reach every area of the back. Next on our list is the gear shifting device. Richard Bowie Spikes 
was a brilliant black inventor with eight patents to his name, awarded in the 1900s. Richard Bowie Spikes created a gear shifting device aimed to keep the gears for various speeds in constant mesh, enhancing the invention of the automatic transmission. He worked as a barber, saloon keeper, and mechanic. He was best known for his achievements in automotive technology. Spikes developed a gear shifting mechanism intended to maintain consistent engagement between gears for different speeds. He wanted to enhance the functionality and efficiency of the automatic transmission by creating a system that allowed gears to work in sync. His innovation improved automatic transmission in the early 1900s. The man was busy. He also invented the beer tapper. Back when bars and taverns didn't have beer taps, alcohol was dispensed from a keg. But because it was hard to limit the constant exposure to oxygen when in use, the beer often went flat and lost its taste. Draft beer can sometimes be fresher, certainly, often because of the way it's, it's packaged. It's not exposed to light. It's kept cold the entire time in this country. Those are things that help maintain the freshness of the beer. So, Spikes came up with a solution that would change the beer dispensing industry forever. He devised a pressure dispensing beer tap. The beer tapper made the process of serving beer more efficient, helped preserve its freshness, and allowed for more consistent pours. This technology is still used today. Another one of his inventions is the self-locking rack for billiard cues. If you've ever played pool, then you've definitely seen the rack. Before the 1900s, cue sticks were often disorganized, misplaced, and damaged. People would leave them leaning against the wall or wherever it was convenient. Spikes invented a rack that featured a mechanism that securely held the cues in place. It prevented the cue sticks from falling or being easily knocked over. The invention had easy access for players and protected property from damage. It was a win-win for everyone. There are other inventions that were useful for daily life, like the dustpan. In 1858, T.E. McNeil, an American inventor, designed the very first dustpan. However, a black American by the name of Lloyd P. Ray was the first one to improve the basic version and add a metal collection plate accompanied by a short wooden handle. This invention received a patent in 1897. The goal was simple, increase the product's durability and functionality. Ray added the metal plate to make the dustpan more resilient to wear and tear. It could hold the debris without bending or breaking easily. Plus, the handle offered better grip and maneuverability. But there was one invention that became one of the most critical additions in medicine. That was the laser faco. Dr. Patricia Bath created laser faco, a new method and device for eliminating cataracts. This innovation is capable of performing all steps of cataract surgery, such as breaking down the lens, making the incision, and removing the shattered pieces. I was not seeking to be the first. I was only attempting to do my thing. It's only when history looks back that you realize you were the first. Bath is the very first black female doctor to obtain a medical patent. She is now in the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Coming up next, we have the carbon filament for light bulb. Louis Latimer was born to formerly enslaved parents back in 1848. As a young man, he was a skilled draftsman who showed remarkable intelligence. He later invented a carbon filament that lasted longer and was more durable than earlier filaments. Because of this invention, incandescent light bulbs became cheaper and easier to buy. They were also safer than gas lamps, making them a go-to choice for the average American. Latimer started working for Thomas Edison and became an expert witness and patent investigator for the Edison Electric Light Company. Here's another invention that was very useful back in the 19th century and that is the tobacco press. John Parker was a black businessman and inventor who held a significant role as an underground railroad conductor before the Civil War. Between 1845 and 1865, he saved almost 1,000 slaves. He was born a slave in 1827 in Norfolk, Virginia, but he moved a lot and learned to read and write. By the 1880s, Parker became an inventor. In 1884, he received a patent for his improved version of the tobacco press. The year after that, he got a patent for the portable tobacco press. By optimizing the design, his products improved efficiency and allowed for more tobacco to be processed in a shorter amount of time. Well, there was another product that took the market by storm, and that was the wonderful hair grower. Ever heard of the first black woman millionaire in the United States? Madam C.J. Walker made a fortune selling her very own hair grower formula. My hair grew back, and so did my confidence. Sisters, let's talk about hair. They put us down, tell us we're ugly, make us feel ugly. Wonderful hair leads to wonderful opportunities. Mama, you sure on this stuff. One thing I learned about dreams, they do come true for them. It's my duty 
to make money and use it for the benefit of my neighbors. She was born in 1867 into slavery, became an orphan at seven years old, a mother at 17, and a widow by 20. After suffering from a scalp disorder that caused substantial hair loss, she devised a treatment that revamped the black hair care industry. She was going after African-American women. And because they were urban, they were beginning to care more about their clothing and about their presentation. She knew that this market was untapped. She began selling her custom pomade in 1905 with just $1.05 in her pocket, and it turned into a lucrative business. It was called the Walker System, which involved preparing the scalp with iron combs and lotions. Here's another invention that also became popular in the hair industry, the dual adjustable mirrors. Samuel Scrotton was another black inventor from the late 1800s. He changed many jobs before becoming a barber, but as soon as he started cutting hair, he realized something was missing. Men are no more without vanity than women. As members of a civilized society, we are concerned with our appearance before others. He invented the dual adjustable mirrors on a standing pole for barber shops. He received a patent in 1868. The purpose behind his creation was to provide barbers with a practical tool that allowed customers to view their haircuts from multiple angles with ease. The mirror was useful for both the barber and the customer. Scotron invented and patented many other products and spent 15 years selling them. Another one of his inventions is the cornice. The adjustable window cornice patented in 1883 was an innovation that allowed for greater control and versatility in window treatments. Unlike traditional fixed cornices, Scotrin's adjustable product offered a solution for more precise and customizable window treatments, allowing users to modify the cornice to suit their specific window dimensions and decorative preferences. This innovation became popular for its ability to accommodate various window sizes and styles. Another small but significant invention was the curtain rod. Scotrin made significant improvements to curtain rods. His invention patented in 1892, specifically focused on metallic rods designed to be fixed across the lower portions of windows. The importance of Samuel's invention lies in its practicality and efficiency. These curtain rods are unique as they are constructed using two telescoping tubes, allowing for adjustment to fit windows of different sizes. The significant aspect of Samuel's invention lies in the secure attachment mechanism for these rods to the window frame, ensuring they can be easily installed and removed, while also remaining firmly in place. But the curtain rod wouldn't have the same effects if it weren't for the curtain pull tip. Scotron patented the pull tip in 1886. It acted as a protective covering for the end of the curtain rod. It prevented potential damage to the wall or surrounding objects when moving or adjusting the curtains. These tips were often designed with decorative elements by covering the sharp and rough ends of the curtain pole. These tips helped prevent the curtains from snagging or catching on the rod. In other words, this invention combined functionality and aesthetics. But there was more where that came from. In 1893, Scotron received another patent for the supporting bracket. This remarkable black inventor created an improved supporting bracket that could be adjusted vertically without using nails or screws, which often weaken and damage the support. Instead, this bracket used the weight of a shelf or any item placed on it to create enough friction to hold the bracket firmly in place without causing damage to the supporting bar. The invention was straightforward and easy to use. Other inventions proved to be critical in more peculiar industries, like the invention of whaling harpoon. Lewis Temple was a black inventor who invented the standard harpoon of the whaling industry in the mid-19th century. Temple was not a whaler. He was a reputable blacksmith. During this time, whaling was a huge industry around the globe. Whales were used for their oil, which was used to lubricate machines and light the city. But their meat was also popular for frying. From 1700 to 1850, the fuel that lit the houses, governments, and businesses of America and much of Europe was whale oil. Crews of whalers would catch the mighty sea creatures, and then either beside the boat or back near shore, they would slice strips of blubber off of the back and the head of the whales in a process called flensing. Many black people worked as seamen for the whaling industry, and when Temple talked with whalers, he realized he could make tools that could boost their business. Temple realized that the harpoons people were using back then couldn't hold a struggling whale in place, which is why many whales escaped. So, in 1848, he came up with the whaling harpoon that prevented the whales from slipping loose. Here is another revolutionary invention, the ship sails handle. James Fortin, born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from 1766 to 1842, 
served in the US Navy during the Revolutionary War. When the British captured him, they offered him freedom, but only under one condition, agreed to live in England. Orton declined and said he would never betray his own people. He made that decision because he really believed in, in uh, the cause of the revolution. He said that uh, since he had been captured as a revolutionary, he felt that he, he still should stay with, with the cause that he was uh, willing to lay down his life for and, and, and fight for. When the war ended, Fortin pursued a different career. He became a sailmaker and invented a contraption to handle ship sails. He received a patent and became a rich man. This successful businessman used his finances to advocate for the abolition of slavery and fight for women's rights. Uh, after his service in the Revolutionary War, he goes on and tries to bring uh, uh, more strength to the abolition movement and becomes involved in the American Anti-Slavery Society. Uh, he's involved in uh, promoting the education of African Americans here in Philadelphia and promoting, promoting their freedom. Next on our list is the Hand Mill for Grinding Corn. George Peake was another black man who fought in the Revolutionary War. He created an improved manual corn grinder. Compared to the older methods, Peake's invention was a lot more practical. It was simpler to work with and produced smoother corn. Even though he didn't receive a patent for his invention, a newspaper recognized Peake for his efforts. As you can see, there were many brilliant minds in the United States, but very few managed to revolutionize railroad safety, like Andrew Jackson Beard did. After all, he was the one who invented the Jenny Coupler. In 1897, Beard obtained a patent for enhancing railroad car couplers. His invention was called the Jenny Coupler. This device was designed to improve the knuckle coupler, which was patented in 1873 by Eli Janney. The knuckle coupler was dangerous when it came to connecting railroad cars. While it did its job, people had to manually place a pin between the two cars. Earlier railroads relied on the link and pin couplers, such as these, with railroad workers manually connecting the pieces at considerable risk to their safety. So, a lot of people lost a limb or ended up with severe injuries. When Beard worked as a railroad worker, he too suffered a car coupling accident, which cost him his leg. Beard got not one, but three patents for his innovations for automatic car couplers. For his Jenny coupler, Beard got $50,000 for the patent rights. That's the equivalent of about $1.5 million today. This black inventor became a part of the National Inventors Hall of Fame. This black inventor also came up with the rotary engine. Beard invented a steam-driven rotary engine, which played a key role in revolutionizing production and manufacturing processes. These engines provided a more efficient power source compared to earlier technologies and allowed for the smooth operation of machinery, thus increasing productivity. Another worthy invention is the mechanical corn seed planter. In the 1800s, corn and cotton was in high demand, but planting was a manual and labor-intensive process. Farmers often used rudimentary methods to sow corn seeds. These seeds were often sown by hand. Farmers used a plow to create furrows in the soil. Then, people walked along the field and dropped the seeds into the soil. In 1834, Henry Blair proved to be a brilliant inventor by designing the mechanical corn seed planter. His patented invention looks like a wheelbarrow with a chamber attached to the bottom of the device to disperse the seeds. After dropping the seeds in the soil, rigs fixed to the wheelbarrow can be used to cover the seeds with soil. This invention was designed to be used for seeding, plowing, and soil coverage all in one. Thanks to his marvelous invention, Blair helped boost crop planting efficiency and provided higher yields for farmers. Another invention from an intelligent black man was the Jessup Wagon. George Washington Carver was a remarkable inventor and agricultural scientist who was born a slave in 1864 before slavery was outlawed. When he was older, he achieved significant success both in the lab and among local people. He educated impoverished farmers by showing them alternative ways to feed hogs using acorns instead of expensive feed and how to improve farmlands by using swamp muck rather than costly fertilizers. Through studying soil chemistry, Carver realized that continuously growing cotton had taken away vital nutrients from the soil, causing poor harvests. When Carver arrived in the South, there were roughly five million black farmers there. Only about one-fifth of them owned any land. Almost all of them shared a common problem, over-reliance on cotton as the region's main cash crop, together with the sharecropper system used to produce it, which depleted the soil and kept tenant farmers in a permanent state of impoverishment. One of his most notable contributions is the Jessup Agricultural Wagon. This mobile classroom was a horse-drawn carriage. It was basically Carver's school on wheels. 
Now, onto a more hygienic invention, the sewer backflow preventer. Hugh M. Brown was an educator and civil rights activist. He invented the sewer backflow preventer and patented it in 1890. This is a device that prevents sewage from flowing back into a home without impeding the usual flow of sewage. This invention helped maintain the functionality of a sewer system, but it also increased public safety by keeping the unwanted water out and reducing the risk of potential health hazards. Another more practical invention was the paper rewinding device. Shelby Davidson was an African American born in 1868. He worked for the United States Postal Service and the auditing department. He kept track of schedules and numbers, making sure that everything was done in a timely manner. Probably out of necessity, Davidson came up with a solution that would reduce the amount of time and paper clerical workers spent doing the paperwork. He created two products, the paper rewinding device in 1908 and the automatic fee device in 1911. Both options were used to drastically improve workflow, but more and more inventions came to the market. One of them was the automated shoe laster. In the early days, people made shoes by hand. Customers would first need to get a custom fit so that the shoemaker can make the right shape and size. A reputable hand laster could make 50 pairs in a 10-hour workday. After working for five years, Jan Ernst Matzeliger successfully acquired a patent in 1883 for his invention of a machine that automated the process of shoe lasting. Matzeliger's machine was capable of producing between 150 and 700 pairs of shoes every day. His invention reduced shoe prices by 50% across the country. Matt's Liga's principle is still in use today. The machine could hold the shoe, pull the leather down around the heel, guide and drive the nails into place to attach the top of the shoe to the sole. Matt's Liga was somewhat of a genius when it came to machinery. At the age of 10, he was a machine shop apprentice in his native country, Dutch Guiana. Next on our list is the protective mailbox. Philip Bell Downing, was a black man who filed at least five patents with the U.S. Patent Office during the late 19th and early 20th century. On October 27, 1891, he got approved for his two patents for a street letterbox. Downing's box looked like the mailboxes we see everywhere now, a tall metal box with a strong swinging door to put letters. Before this, if people wanted to send mail, they had to personally go to the post office, but Downing's creation let them drop letters close to their home for a carrier to pick up easily. His clever door design kept rain and snow out to keep the mail safe. Another one of his inventions is the envelope moistener. On January 26, 1917, Downing got one more patent. His envelope moistener used a roller and a small water tank that could be used to moisten envelopes. It was a practical invention for high volume shipments. Next on this list is the Electret microphone. James West studied at Temple University before joining Bell Labs. He, along with Gerard M. Sessler, created the electric microphone, a small cheap device used in 90% of modern microphones. It revolutionized microphones in the sense that it um, a condenser microphone uh, at the time in, in the 60s when we started this work, you couldn't buy a condenser microphone for less than $2,000. By eliminating the need for the battery, this meant that you could make something very simple. West is a prolific writer with over 250 patents. He became a professor at John Hopkins University in 1960 at Bell Labs. West and Sessler collaborated to develop a low-cost, highly sensitive microphone. Bell Labs is where West called home for more than 40 years. Despite his successful career, working in physics and engineering was not what his parents envisioned for their young son. They completed the product in 1962 which is a technology that can be used in a wide range of products. By 1968, it was mass produced. Today, the invention is an industry standard and can be found in tape recorders, telephones, hearing aids, baby monitors, and camcorders. Well, not all inventions are meant to revamp an entire industry. Some can just be used for fun and still bring a ton of cash. That's exactly what happened with the Super Soaker. Lonnie Johnson invented the Super Soaker back in 1982, but that is not his only invention. Well, I have over 100 patents. He also worked on NASA's Galileo mission to Jupiter and alongside the U.S. military. Lonnie G. Johnson is a former Air Force and NASA engineer who invented the best-selling water toy of all time back in the 1980s. This toy is called the Super Soaker. 
This invention uses hand-pumped air to shoot water further, stronger, and more accurately than regular water pistols. Working on a new type of heat pump that would use water as a working fluid instead of Freon. And I was experimenting with uh, some nozzles that I machined. And I shot a stream of water across the bathroom and I thought, geez, maybe I should put this hard side stuff aside and work on something fun like a water gun. It still works. This impressive piece of technology makes a high-performance toy that children can't get enough of. Johnson is also the inventor of the Nerf gun. This toy gun fires foam darts, discs, arrows, or foam balls. It is without a doubt one of the most popular toys being used today. Johnson patented several Nerf products in the 90s. At one point, just about all the toy guns, the water guns, super soaker, of course, and a good percentage of the uh, Nerf dart guns were all based on my patents. I actually set out to grab the dart gun market as well as the water gun market. Making him one of the most popular modern day inventors. Here's another invention you probably didn't know was invented by a black person. The gas heating furnace. Alice H. Parker, a black inventor in the early 1900s, is famous for patenting a natural gas-based central heating system. Her invention was crucial in shaping the heating systems we use in our homes today. We don't have much information about Parker's life or background, probably because women, especially black women back then, weren't adequately documented. Parker got the idea for her heating system when she felt cold during the winters in New Jersey. At that time, fireplaces couldn't heat entire homes well. Most homeowners relied on wood or coal for warmth. Parker's idea was special because it used natural gas. It helped people save time. Plus, it was much safer to use a heating system than to keep the fire burning all night. Parker received her patent on December 23rd, 1919. Although her invention wasn't the first for a gas furnace design, it stood out because it had multiple burners that could be controlled individually. Her system paved the way for modern thermostats and heating zone systems. But there's more where that came from. The first person to patent the golf tee was Dr. George Franklin Grant, an avid golfer, born in Oswego, New York in 1847. Grant started working for a local dentist as a young boy, doing errands and later helping in the lab. He then became a dental assistant and secured a place at the newly established Harvard Dental School. In 1870, he became the second black American to graduate from dental school. The first university-based dental program in the nation. Two years later, he graduated with honors becoming the second African-American to earn a degree in dentistry, the first being his fellow classmate, Robert Tanner Freeman. In his free time, he loved to play golf. He and his golf partners were among the first black golfers after the Civil War. He played with well-known figures in Boston like civil rights activist Archibald Grimke, lawyer Bustler Wilson, and restaurateur Howard Lee. Dr. Grant didn't like the messy process of teeing up golf balls with moist sand, so he invented the world's first golf tee. He patented it on December 12, 1899. However, Grant was more of an inventor than a businessman, which is why he never marketed his invention. Instead, he gave them away to friends and playing partners. Nearly a century after his patent, in 1991, the United States Golf Association finally recognized Grant for his significant contribution to the game of golf. Here is another invention that you probably had no idea was invented by a black man, and that is the ice cream scooper. Alfred L. Crow was an inventor and a very successful businessman. He is famous for inventing the ice cream scoop in 1897. He later became a general manager for the African-American Financial Accumulating Merchandise and Business Association. He was born on September 4, 1866 in Kenbridge, Lunenburg County, Virginia, just after the Civil War ended. While working at a hotel, he came up with the idea for the ice cream scoop. He noticed that servers struggled to scoop ice cream into cones with spoons and ladles. They had to use both their hands and separate tools to serve their customers. To solve this problem, Crow created a mechanical tool, which was first called the ice cream mold and disher. He patented it on February 2nd, 1897. This invention was designed to prevent ice cream from sticking. The patent, not quite like this, but similar. The patented ice cream mold and disher was an ice cream scoop with a built-in scraper like this to allow for one-handed operations like that. It was easy to use with just one hand and proved to be durable, efficient, and affordable. Next on our list is the rotary blade lawnmower. John Albert Burr obtained a patent on May 9th, 1899 for an upgraded rotary blade lawnmower. He created a mower with grip wheels and a spitting blade that resisted getting clogged by grass clippings. It ensured a more efficient cutting process. He also enhanced the mower's design, allowing it to cut closer to buildings and walls. 
Burr's invention improved the precision and maneuverability of lawnmowers. His improvements set a standard for future lawnmower designs, influencing the development of more effective and user-friendly lawn care equipment. Now to a more peculiar invention, the refrigerating apparatus. Dr. Thomas Elkins, a well-respected pharmacist in Albany, was not only known for his community involvement, but also for his passion for inventing. He was an abolitionist and served as the secretary of the Vigilance Committee. Elkins developed a new refrigeration device. Back then, people used large containers with ice blocks to keep food cold, but the ice melted quickly and the food often spoiled. In 1878, Elkins received a patent for a refrigerating apparatus that chilled items using water evaporation. Interestingly, this device could also be used to store corpses. Here's how it worked. The apparatus came with an insulated cabinet where ice was inserted to lower the inside temperature. Therefore, it was considered a refrigerator, but without mechanical coolers. He literally transformed the old-fashioned method of food storage. Next on our list is the mop. Thomas Stewart from Kalamazoo, Michigan, got a patent for a new kind of mop on June 11th, 1893. This mop had a special clamping system that could squeeze out water with the help of a lever. Before his invention, people had to manually wring and squeeze the water out. Stewart's mop had a clamp and springs, which were designed to let users push a lever to squeeze out water. He also made the mop head detachable for easy replacement or cleaning. First, he designed a mop head that you could actually remove. You could take it and wash it and scrub it, and, and when it got too dirty to reuse again, you just toss it and buy another one. But then he designed a lever that would attach to the mop head. When you pulled it out, you could twist it and it would wring all the dirty water out of the mop without you actually having to touch it. We've been lied to about who we truly are and our history all of our lives, which is how they keep us stuck broke and confused but it's time to change the narrative and understand our true power it all starts in your mind that's exactly why we made our new hidden history workbook it's a free workbook designed for those that want to wake up and go deeper than the whitewashed version of our history this will only be available for a limited time click the link in our description to grab yours now for free this improved mop design is still used today another one of his inventions is the station and street indicator before Stewart's invention, warning signs were the only method used to signal approaching trains or streetcars. But these signs were not effective in providing real-time warnings. Stewart's indicator, activated by a lever on the tracks, improved safety by giving an immediate signal when the train or streetcar was nearby. He patented his invention in 1883. Stewart's indicator was a technological advancement in signaling systems. It contributed to smoother traffic flow helped prevent accidents, and allowed for better coordination between pedestrian and vehicle traffic. Next on this list is the fountain pen. In 1890, William Purvis from Philadelphia invented and patented upgrades for the fountain pen. He wanted to create a pen that was cheaper, more durable, and easier to carry in a pocket. Purvis introduced an elastic tube between the pen nib and the ink container. This tube used suction to pull extra ink back into the reservoir, reducing spills and making the ink last longer. While fountain pens were patented as far back as 1809, Purvis significantly improved their durability and convenience with this invention. Another interesting invention is the chemical for hair straightening. Garrett Augustus Morgan Sr., the same man who invented the three-way traffic light and the gas mask, also invented a chemical hair processing and straightening solution. He became a very successful businessman thanks to his products and opened up a business called G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. The company sold many of his patented hair care products, such as the hair straightening cream, hair straightening comb, and hair coloring. Here's another product that was designed by a black inventor. That's the reversible baby stroller. Even though people have always used different methods to carry their babies, the very first baby carriage was invented in 1733 by William Kent. The product was designed for the Duke of Devonshire. Well, obviously, the carriage had to be fancy and covered in gold and silver. Because it came at such a high cost, only wealthy people could afford this kind of baby carriage for the lower class. The baby carriage was made out of wood or wicker, but in 1889, a black inventor by the name of William H. Richardson patented a new kind of baby carriage. His idea allowed the bassinet to face the person pushing the carriage by using a special joint. He also made changes so each wheel could turn separately, letting the stroller move in any direction easily. This new design made strollers more affordable and they became popular among middle-class families. Next on our list is the biscuit cutter. Alexander P. Ashbourne, an early inventor, was born into slavery in Philadelphia around 1820. 
When he was freed, he worked at affluent weddings and buffets in the city. While working at one such event, he noticed that the biscuits lacked any form or shape. This inspired him to create a solution that would make the perfect biscuits, the biscuit cutter. Ashbourne applied for a patent on May 11, 1875 and received a patent on November 20, 1876. His patented cutter featured a board for easy loading and unloading of biscuits. It also included metal plates with different shapes. By pressing the plate onto the dough, the cook could create specialized shapes effortlessly. Ashbourne kept inventing and received another patent for processing coconut oil. Ashbourne's oil refining method involved filtering, bleaching, heating at high temperatures, and ultimately hydrogenation to remove unsaturated fatty acids from the oil. He started developing this process in 1875 and obtained a patent on July 27, 1880. Ashbourne's pioneering efforts led to the widespread use of coconut oil in food items, hair, and scented products. Another invention that deserves a spot on this list is the coin changer. James A. Bauer invented the coin changer mechanism in the 1970s. This is a type of vending machine that changes dollar bills into coins. The coin changer was especially useful in places like laundromats, arcades, or public transportation, where people needed coins for various services. Bauer's invention represented an innovation in vending technology, showcasing the potential to create machines that facilitated transactions and improved customer experiences. Next on this list is the stainless steel scoring pads. Alfred Benjamin received a patent in the 1960s for an invention that improved the scouring pads. The invention presents a dual layer scrubbing pad woven from stainless steel wool. One side has a specific coarseness while the other has a different coarseness. A plastic disc is usually placed between the layers at the pad center. The pad has steel wool arms extending from it with attached rings for support and securing to the user's hand. The main goal of this invention is to create a metal wool pad with varied coarseness on each side and with mechanisms to attach it to the user's hand. Another invention is the bed rack. Henrietta Bradbury, a housewife from Chicago, didn't just stay at home, she was also an inventor. On May 25th, 1943, she secured a patent for her innovative bed rack. This attachment could be added to a bed's end, allowing worn clothes to hang and be refreshed by flowing air. Her 1941 patent explained that it was meant for exposing bedclothes to fresh air after use. Bradbury cleverly designed the rack to fold by adding a pedal that could be used for raising or lowering the device. Two years later, the Kentucky native came up with another interesting invention, the torpedo discharger. She devised a new method for releasing torpedoes from submarines and underground forts. While her bed rack took two years to receive patent approval, the torpedo discharger was quickly approved because of the war efforts going on at the time. Her torpedo firing system allowed for multiple launches while keeping water away from the mechanism responsible for releasing the missiles. Bradbury explained that because she stayed at home, she had plenty of time to refine her inventions. So the ideas just came to her naturally. Another invention that has made a notable impact is the disposable syringe. Phil Brooks was a black inventor from Kansas. He received the very first patent for the disposable syringe. A syringe is a basic pump with a tight fitting plunger in a tube. By moving the plunger inside the cylindrical tube, known as a barrel, the syringe can draw in or push out liquids or gases through an opening at the tube's end. The syringe's open end is equipped with a hypodermic needle, nozzle, or tubing to control the flow in and out of the barrel. These tools are commonly used for injections, especially for delivering drugs through veins, applying substances like glue or lubricants, and measuring liquids. Next on our list is the street sweeper truck. In the past, people had to sweep the streets by hand, day in and day out. They had no other choice but to use a broom, shovel, and dustpan. The streets were cleaned by walking workers who manually cleaned the streets or used horse-drawn machines to get the job done. But a black man from Newark, New Jersey, decided to bring a drastic change. Charles B. Brooks invented and patented the very first self-propelled street sweeper truck in 1896. His invention was equipped with brushes that could push the trash to the curb and clean the streets with ease. When winter came, the brushes could be changed with a flat scraper to clean the ice and snow. It was truly an impressive machine. Another invention that deserves a spot on this list is the horseshoe improvement. In 1892, Oscar E. Brown patented an enhancement for horseshoes. His patent introduced a design with both an upper and lower shoe. This innovation aimed to reduce the horse's discomfort when the lower shoe had to be replaced. By incorporating an upper shoe along with the lower one, the invention increased the overall durability and longevity of the horseshoe. 
This meant that the shoe replacement process would be less frequent, reducing the stress on the horse's hooves. Black people also invented plenty of devices that helped the transportation industry. One such invention was the train alarm. Richard A. Butler invented and patented a new and improved train alarm in 1897. His goal was to provide a device that could benefit trainmen when the train approached an overhead bridge. The train alarm acted as an early detection device, providing enough time for train operators to take necessary precautions, slow down, or stop the train. This early warning system helped prevent accidents and collisions, potentially saving a lot of lives. Another impressive invention is the ultraviolet camera spectrograph. George Carruthers was a black inventor, space scientist, and physicist. I first became interested in space when I was in elementary school and I happened to get a Buck Rogers comic book which I found very interesting that was long before the space was a reality. He was known around the world for his work. His focus revolved around observing the Earth's upper atmosphere and celestial events using ultraviolet technology. Dr. Carruthers' initial significant contribution to science was when he created the Far Ultraviolet Camera Spectrograph. He obtained a patent for his invention on November 11, 1969. The invention is known as the image converter for detecting electromagnetic radiation, especially in short wavelengths. Now to a more practical invention, the process of producing paints and stains. George Washington Carver, the same man who invented the Jessup wagon, also invented the process of producing paints and stains from clays. By selecting the right color, this method can create various filler, pigment, and stain colors for treating wood or other substances. Carver is also known for his peanut products. He has invented more than 300 products from peanuts, such as laundry soap, sweeping compound, peanut flour, cream candy, peanut flakes, and more. His products made a significant boost to the economy of the rural South. Carver began urging farmers to rotate crops and to use organic fertilizers. He preached the value of planting soil-restoring crops such as peanuts, sweet potatoes, black-eyed peas, and soybeans. Next is the automatic fishing reel. In 1899, George Cook, a black inventor from Kentucky, obtained a patent for an automatic fishing device. This device had a trip lever triggered by tension on the fishing line. When activated, it released a spring-loaded carriage that moved within the device's frame. Inside the carriage was a spring-driven reel that wound up the fishing line. Another invention is the improved wash machine for photographs and negatives. When developing photos and negatives, it's crucial to soak them in chemical baths. Platonia Joaquin Dordicus created an improved machine in 1893 that prevents staining, bleaching, and overwashing caused by leftover chemicals. He also came up with the improved embossing photo machine. This invention offers a 3D impression to photographs, which literally revamped the printing industry but there are other inventions from black inventors that helped take the printing industry to new heights, such as the improved printing press. William A. Lavalette made some noteworthy improvements to the printing press in 1878. His invention had a movable bed with arms, toggles, and a lever for retracting the bed when necessary. Next is the envelope seal. Wax sealed messaging has been around for centuries, but on September 21st, 1891, F.W. Leslie patented a new modern envelope seal. His invention had two metallic discs that locked together and kept the envelope securely closed. Another useful invention is the pressure cooker. Morris W. Lee Jr. invented the pressure cooker in 1958. He received a patent in 1963. The device used wood to add flavor to the meat. Another popular household item invented by a black inventor was the window cleaner. Anthony L. Lewis from Illinois patented the window cleaner in 1892. His device was a useful improvement to window cleaners. His invention came with a reservoir and a scraper, which could be used to wash and scrape a number of windows. Then there is the portable pencil sharpener. In 1828, a French inventor came up with the very first pencil sharpener, but his invention was so bulky and impractical that it never caught on. In 1897, John Lee Love, a black inventor, patented the Love Sharpener, which was a more efficient and portable pencil sharpener compared to its earlier versions. Next is the first fire extinguisher sprinkler system. Thomas J. Marshall improved the design of the fire extinguisher. He issued a patent on March 26, 1872 for inventing a system where water moves through pipes inside buildings, reaching individual sprinkler heads. The system can be turned off or on via a valve. Another invention is the 
Improved Hairbrush Lida Newman patented her hairbrush in 1898 when she was 13 years old. She created a product specifically designed for African American hair. Instead of natural animal hair, the hairbrush used synthetic bristles. We bring you to a different invention, the blimp. In 1900, John F. Pickering, a black inventor, received a patent for a blimp, also known as an airship. His invention was far more improved than its original design. It was the first airship powered by an electric motor with directional controls. On to another invention, and that's the improved hand stamp. William Purvis, the same man who improved the fountain pen, received a patent in 1883 for improving the hand stamp. His invention was capable of replenishing its own ink. Then there was the insect destroyer gun. It was invented by Albert C. Richardson at the end of the 1800s. Although the invention wasn't that successful, it paved the way for pesticides to be studied for keeping insects away from crop fields. But the food industry wouldn't be what it is today without the sugar refining process. Norbert Rilu, the son of a black slave woman and a rich French engineer, born in 1806, discovered a method to revamp the sugar refining process. Norbert Rilu was born on March 17, 1806. As a Creole, he had access to education and opportunities that were unavailable to free blacks or slaves. He attended private Catholic schools in Louisiana, and then in the early 1820s, he traveled to Paris to attend a famous engineering school. While in France, Norbert developed an invention that would revolutionize the sugar refining industry. Between 1834 and 1843, he created and patented his invention. He put the condensing coils in a vacuum sealed container, reducing the liquid's boiling point. This allowed the juice to evaporate in another chamber under a stronger vacuum. Rilu's method significantly cut production, costs, and created superior quality sugar. A more recent invention is the gamma electric cell. Henry Sampson was the co-inventor of the gamma electric cell, an electrical apparatus that transforms gamma radiation into energy. Gamma electric cell is a uh, solid state device, I mean it's a solid device for converting energy from gamma radiation directly to electricity. This, uh, the gamma electric cell is currently being used to measure the, um, uh, measure the strength of uh, radiation that emanates from underground nuclear testing at Los Alamos. Then there is the urinalysis machine. A black inventor by the name of Dewey Sanderson patented the urinalysis machine in 1970. His invention was meant to perform different urinalysis steps automatically, all of which were previously done manually. Sanderson also invented the medical compress. It was designed to stop the bleeding from a wound or vein after removing a needle used for drawing blood for lab tests or administering medicine or plasma into the circulatory system. Another invention was the roller mechanism for the player piano. Joseph Hunter Dickinson is a black inventor and craftsman who provided many improvements to musical instruments. He was well known for improving the player pianos, specifically the softness or loudness of the key strikes. He wasn't the first person to invent the player piano, but he was the first to patent an improvement that enabled the piano to begin playing from any point on the music roll. His roller mechanism made it possible for the piano to play the music forwards or backwards. He was also known as the primary contributing inventor of the duo art reproducing piano. The piano allowed for highly accurate reproduction of performances by famous pianists. It was one of the leading reproducing piano technologies of the early 20th century. Another invention that's credited to a black inventor is the doorstop. The history of formerly produced doorstops can be traced back to 18th century Europe. They were mass produced in the early 19th century across the European continent. But by the middle of that century, most of the manufacturing had shifted to the United States. Even though doorstops were made earlier, the first one to patent the invention in 1878 was Osborne Dorsey, a black inventor from the United States. He also invented the doorknob. That same year, Dorsey applied for a patent designed to provide improvements on the door latching device. This helped bring the first modern doorknob to the market. A lot of different doorknobs and handle designs have come out since then. Another interesting invention is the modified version of a traditional guitar. Robert Fleming Jr. was a 19th century American guitar maker and music teacher who designed a type of guitar he called the euphonica. He didn't invent the guitar as we know it, but he did create an invention that produced a louder and more resonant sound than a standard guitar. He patented his invention in 1886. Then there was the thermo hair curler. Solomon Harper, born in Arkansas, 1893 was a black inventor who created the very first electrically heated hair curler. He wanted to create the curler 
because he wanted to show the world that even though he was black, he could still produce a wonderful thing that even white people could use. Solomon got a patent for his first design in 1930. Later, in 1953, he applied for another patent with an improved device. Today, the hair curler is one of the most popular devices in the beauty industry. But back then, Solomon faced a lot of difficulties getting financial rewards and acknowledgement for his invention. Next on our list is Improved Lantern. Michael C. Harvey was a black inventor who strived to improve the lantern. He patented a new device for a lantern in 1884. His innovation enhanced the mechanisms that lifted wicks and oil lanterns. The wick absorbed oil beneath it, and when the lantern was lit, the soaked wick produced light. While Harvey may not be the original lantern inventor, he deserves recognition for enhancing it. Other inventions also deserve a spot on our list, one of which is the gas burner. Benjamin F. Jackson was a black inventor who obtained a patent in 1911 for creating the gas burner for candy kettles. The gas burner is a heating tool powered by natural gas. Jackson's innovation guaranteed better fuel combustion by enhancing the even spread of pressurized air. He also managed to make enhancements to pressurized gas burners, similar to those used in propane grills. He invented the improved steam boiler and a matrix drying apparatus. He is among many black inventors who've made some of the biggest contributions to science. Another black inventor made a significant impact in the cycling industry with the invention of the bicycle frame. Although Isaac Johnson wasn't the first person to invent the bicycle frame, he was the first black American to create and patent a bicycle frame that people could fold and take apart when they needed. It was the perfect product for easy storage. He patented his invention in 1899. Coming up at number 90 is the eye protector. Powell Johnson from Alabama was fully aware of how exposure to intense heat and glare can damage the eyes. So he wanted to invent a product that would fix this problem. He patented the eye protector in 1880. Johnson designed these protectors for various workers, including furnace men, puddlers, firemen, and many more. These eye protectors were the first of its kind. Next is the egg beater. Willis Johnson patented the rotary mixing machine that could be used for different recipes. It was a very efficient device as it provided faster rotations that saved a lot of time and effort. Manufacturers have since improved on this design with a variety of styles and forms. Another invention was the two-cycle gas engine. Frederick M. Jones patented the two-cycle gas engines in 1945. The goal was to create an engine where multiple cylinders share a common crankshaft chamber. It involves double pistons and cylinders where one part operates as a charging chamber. In typical two-cycle engines, each piston and associated components work separately. But in this design, two pistons operate in tandem, one going up as the other goes down. This innovation improves efficiency and achieves a well-balanced operation. Since his death in 1961, Frederick Jones has been recognized as one of America's great inventors and was the first African-American to receive the National Medal of Technology. Fred Jones holds more than 50 patents. Coming up next is the bottle caps. Amos E. Long and Albert A. Jones are black inventors who contributed to inventing the bottle caps in September 13, 1898. They created various types of caps that could be used to seal bottle openings and keep the drinks fresh for an extended period of time. Another invention is the ticket punch. Charles Brooks came up with a hand tool that could mark admission tickets and other paper or cards. He patented his invention in 1893. This is an early example of a paper punch. Then there was the stair climbing wheelchair. Rufus Jack Weaver was born in 1927 in Louisville, Kentucky. He was a black inventor and Navy veteran. In 1968, he patented a wheelchair that would help people with disabilities use the stairs. Next is the wagon mounted fire escape ladder. Joseph Richard Winters was a black inventor and an abolitionist who patented his invention in 1878. Since buildings were becoming taller and taller, fire became a major hazard. Fire crews had to carry ladders, which were usually normal sized. It also took too long for them to set up the ladders. Joseph's invention gave firemen easy access to tall buildings. Then there was the electric roller coaster. In 1892, Grenville T. Woods came up with the figure eight, the world's first electric roller coaster. Another worthy invention was the programmable remote controllers. Dr. Joseph N. Jackson is the brain behind the programmable TiVo, DVR, VCR, and television remote controllers. Then there was the pacemaker. Otis Boykin invented resistors that could be used as a control unit for the implantable pacemakers. And lastly, the first useful helicopter. 
Paul E. Williams was a black inventor who patented the Lockheed Model 186 XH-51. This was an experimental helicopter and just three units were built. This documentary took us a lot of time and effort to put together. All we ask is that you drop a like, subscribe, and share this video to spread our true history. Thank you for watching and see you next time.